What's up guys and welcome back to another plumbing video. This will be less of a do-it-yourself type of video and more of an instructional one as I want to address a common problem that occurs when a plumber tries to solder copper pipe for a repair or modification. You may have already heard of the famous old timers trick which consists in using a white piece of bread inside a copper pipe. The reason plumbers do this is to stop any flowing water from disturbing the actual soldering process. Soldering with water inside a pipe is literally impossible due to the fact that the water acts as a coolant and cools the pipe as you're heating it, which is a very frequent issue for service plumbers when doing repairs. I won't be showing you how to solder, but how to stop the water in its tracks to be able to. If you're interested in learning how to solder, I have two videos that show exactly how to do so, which I'll link in the description box below this video, or you could use this little card right here to watch it. For the purpose of this video, I'll be adding in a 3 quarter inch by half inch T on the cold water line, which would feed a toilet upstairs. There's a few reasons why there might still be water in the pipes. It could be that the main water valve isn't sealing properly after it's been shut, or just the fact that the system wasn't given any air to evacuate the water adequately. Sometimes, nothing could be done to stop it from dribbling out the pipe, and in order to complete the joint, there are several ways to bypass this problem, starting with number one, which is waiting for all the water to come out. Before whipping out the big guns, it might be best to just wait a few minutes before all the water is out of the pipes after it's been cut. Something that helps immensely to speed up the process would be to open up all the fixtures to give some air to the system. If after a couple of minutes the flow doesn't seem to want to stop, you need to think of another solution which leads me to my next option. Purging at the lowest point. Normally, the best place to purge would be right at the main valve. If you have a valve with a small purge on it like I do, you would just close the valve, empty as much water as you could from the fixtures nearby, and finish by this purge right here. It's been seen many times that these valves are installed the wrong way, so you'd have to make sure that it's installed correctly or else you'd be purging the city's water. With the lines empty, you could then proceed to soldering. Number three is using a wet dry vacuum to suck out or blow out the water in the pipes. In order for this trick to work, you need to open a fixture nearby to allow for the water to move, or else you'd just be creating a negative pressure inside the system. As seen here, the clear pipe shows that it does in fact pull out all the water. Just make sure you remove the filter before doing this. Once there's no more water leaking, you could get back to soldering. Number 4 is the famous bread trick. Now, let me just get this out of the way. When I say bread trick, I mean white bread trick, not this stuff. So, the idea is to shove a tightly knit ball of white bread far enough in the pipe to stop the water from flowing temporarily. Now, as much as this is a proven trick, it has its downsides to it. The bread easily dissolves and would be pushed out if there was the slightest pressure buildup in back of it and doesn't really work well on vertical pipes because the weight of the water will easily push it out. What's nice though is that it's readily available, inexpensive and it dissolves once there's water back in the pipes, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Number 5 is using a compression valve. The compression valve is more of a user-friendly or do-it-yourselfer option of addressing this type of problem and would be installed right before the repair itself. Another good alternative is to use a push or shark bite valve to get the same results. Once the valve is installed, you could then go ahead and close it and move on. The water will be held back by the valve and shouldn't disturb the soldering process. Although these methods do work, there's a lot of controversy on whether these fittings should be installed in a wall or not, so do take some precautions when using these methods. Number 6 is using a drain coupling or elbow. These special fittings have the same little purge as the main water valve you saw before and allow for water and steam to be drained while soldering. Once again, just like the compression valve, this fitting would get installed on the side where the water is flowing and would be permanently soldered in place along with the repair. These fittings come in different shapes and sizes, the only downside to them is that they aren't readily available at your local hardware store. 
And personally, the fact that the purge relies on a small rubber gasket that could dry up in time, I wouldn't install this in a closed wall, but that's just my way of doing it. And lastly, is using this neat gadget right here called the Jet Sweat. The Jet Sweat is a device that allows for the leaking pipe to be temporarily blocked to solder on a shutoff valve which could then be closed to complete the repair. This is by far the most reliable way of countering this problem as compression fittings and drain couplings aren't recommended to be installed in a closed wall. This kit as is, is quite expensive but each jet sweat could be purchased individually to lower the cost of the repair. I'll be doing a more thorough video on how the tool is used in the future so keep an eye out for that. And that's 7 ways that a plumber would go about soldering a copper pipe with water flowing out of it. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video if you learned something from it and until the next one, thanks for watching.